people should understand how vulnerable websites are to denial of service attacks. It's no should be a feather in no one's cap that they took GRC down. Uh, you know, a, a hundred megabits will take GRC down because we just have a simple connection to the internet, and um, and and it's that the economics of that works for us. So it's not like we're some super hardened, you know, high tech security firm that's like hard to kill. We're we're not, um, and the and the the tools this also requires no skill on on the attacker side it's a matter of using any linux or in some cases windows machine because uh, despite my attempt to get microsoft not to put raw sockets in windows that's what this enables raw sockets is what this you have to have raw sockets to do this um you know microsoft went ahead and did that. So, and then the argument was, well, all, you know, Linux machines have raw sockets too. It's like, yeah, they do. And, and so any tool running on a Linux machine simply sprays DNS queries to publicly available DNS servers and DNS servers by, by definition are publicly available. They're like web servers. They have to be on the internet in order to serve the 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 people who are querying them for DNS in the same way that web servers provide pages for people who are querying for those. So the so UDP packets, these little short DNS queries, are sent out with GRC's IP 4.79.142.200. That's GRC.com. So you simply you 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 deliberately rewrite this little TC, the, 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 this little IP packet with UDP protocol saying that that's the source of the query. And you spray these to the world's DNS servers. Um, they get them and they go, oh, for some reason, GRC wants me to look up this IP address. Okay. And sends the response. And so the, 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 the result is that all of the DNS servers that are, that, are, that are part of this attack are flooding my one IP with their responses, for which I never asked, but we've seen incredible traffic aggregation, 13 gigabits worth of traffic that, that this attack peaked at on Valentine's Day on, on Sunday. Uh, and in fact, level three quoted 10 uh, when I talked to them this morning. That, that's, the, that's the first thing I, that's the first time I had any sense for the scale of this attack since I, because it's funny, I, I have had such a perfect experience with level three that I hadn't logged into the portal for five years because Everything was working perfectly. So I was unable over the weekend to log in because after six months, it, they, they just block it until you contact them. So I did that this morning. They gave me access to, to, my, to, to my own uh, interface at level three. And that's when oh, oh, during that first sponsorship, I saw that I'm looking at this graph <laughs> with some serious spikes of bandwidth. Uh, so, you know, they, so... The, there is really no way to track this person down. It's like, oh, you know, go figure out who it is. It's nice to say that, but the reality is you can't. Now, I, and I was thinking a little bit about the whole concern over cybersecurity and, and, and so forth. Well, remember that, that in order for this to be doable, wherever this person or people's networks are. They are allowing packets to egress from their network onto the internet with an obviously false source IP. Inside of any network, like inside of Cox, it's going to be, you know, 24.78. something dot something, whatever Cox's range of IPs are. But if the if the bad guy or a a machine under the bad guy's control were 
generating UDP packets, say with GRC as their source, that's it's it's impossible for that to be true as that packet leaves just to use Cox again, leaves Cox's control, leaves leaves that ISP's network. The router that is there on the boundary sees is seeing a packet leaving that says it originated from grc.com, but it originated inside of Cox's network. So if the router was doing egress filtering, if it was, and it's also known as reverse path, if it if it looked at the if it looked at the packet and said, should this be coming from inside this network? And it obviously shouldn't. The packet should be dropped. And 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 if networks were dropping spoofed packets with spoofed source IPs, this problem goes away. Now the argument is. Well, yeah, there are other ways to do DDoSs. You could, for example, swamp a person with page access queries, you know, valid requests for their home page. Uh, and and if they're they have a lot of scripting involved and it's expensive to generate pages, then that'll that that'll bring down their server. And that's the case. But something like uh uh, the whole problem with spoof source IPs, I mean we talked about this years ago. Um Again, I haven't wanted to poke a stick in anyone's eye because I recognize how completely vulnerable I am. Well, and how and infuriating it is that ISPs aren't doing their job. It, it, you, you could argue that, yes. Th that, There's no that excuse all, for not doing that. Right. There now, really isn't. There, 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 there could is be no this, valid... They could be, you know, in the Philippines. I mean, they could be places where the, the people don't care or don't know any better. Ah, and there's a solution for that, too, because, again, packets, because routers, for example, on the border between the U.S. and the Philippines, the routers know if, you know, like where GRC is. They, the routers have routing tables, and so they know geographically where networks are, and if packets are coming in from an interface that makes no sense, a router at the border of the U.S. could say, uh, no, sorry, oh, yeah. GRC is in over here. It's right. not out there on the other side of the ocean. And so, again, so we could even have international protection. I mean, the, 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 this idea could work. But, but, you know, one of the themes of this podcast is inertia. Look at how difficult it was just to retire a, you know, a, a, a hash, <laughs> you know, the SHA-1 hash. No, no, please don't stop. We, you know, we need it for an extra six months and back and forth and all this. So, you know, here we're talking about routers that are already overworked that, you know, and, and this, this might break some, this might subtly break some things. I mean, there's been lots of dialogue and conversation about this over the years because this is a well-known problem. It is completely fixable, yet there is zero traction on it.